Zen 5 rumours have reached fever pitch on the internet, and it's not really surprising given so many of the leaks concerning the performance are just so mind-blowing. We're looking at a massive performance uptick over Zen 4. But it's also not surprising then that there's a lot of whispers that I'm hearing of what comes next. In this video, I wanted to touch on some of these whispers because while Zen 5 is going to be very impressive in terms of performance and a generational uptick, Zen 6 is going to be impressive for a completely different reason. It's going to profoundly change the way that we view processors, particularly when it comes to desktop lineup from AMD. And we're going to talk about this plus much more stuff after this message from the video sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Now, the first caveat I want to get into in this video is that I will be primarily focusing on the desktop side of things in this video. Some of this information is also quite early, so it's possible that we're hearing a little bit of conflicting information between, let's say, the desktop and server. I'll get more into that when I talk about the CCD stuff. But yeah, I do want to focus mostly on the desktop side of things. And I think the first thing to really talk about when talking about the desktop is the platform itself. Surprisingly, I've heard from multiple sources, and a couple of these folks have been very accurate in the past. I'm not going to obviously attribute specific pieces of information to them. But um, basically, I've been told by a couple of sources that AM5 has not been decided upon yet. Basically, AMD engineers want to stick to the current platform, giving AM5 a more similar life cycle to AM4. Um, obviously, we saw AM4 across multiple product generations, and it's still relevant today. Whereas management wants to push to a new next generation platform. Now, I'm not certain what this next platform would bring in terms of features. For example, would it bring big changes to io memory support maybe you know quad channel memory that's not a leak that's just spitballing and speculation but it's very difficult to know exactly why amd management wants to bring you know a new platform to bear and it will be very interesting to see how all of this plays out now a big rumor of course we've heard about zen 5 indicate that we're looking at a big performance advantage over zen 4 but mostly this is done with IPC improvements. I've spoken so much about Zen 5 in past videos and I'll put out an update soonish with kind of a summary and how we're gonna see it compare against Intel's next generation processors. But long story short, there's a big architectural redesign and the clock frequencies remain pretty similar potentially regressing a little bit versus Ryzen 7000. But again, there's a big uptick in IPC, which may more than make up for this. And of course, we're seeing the core counts probably scale to around the same number as we're seeing now. So for example, 16 for higher end, and well, we'll have to see how the mid range ends up shaping up, whether there's any increases at all. But again, in terms of the highest end core count, it's 16. Zen 6 though is very, very different. From what I'm hearing, and I first reported this back in uh, March of this year, it seems that basically speaking, the performance um, of these chips is really gonna come down to clock and power consumption improvements backed up by small to modest IPC gains. Now again, I was told this in March of last year, but now several other people have come out and told me that this is most likely true. This does not mean Zen 6 is disappointing. I mean, again, you can look at Zen 4, and even if, for example, there's only a 5% IPC gain, and again, I stress this is only an example, this is not a specific number that I was told, plus several other 100 megahertz on the clock frequency, and some other changes I'll get into in just a second, we could still see some decent improvements across the board. It's very possible as well that if this is on an AM5, many people skip a generation, so we could see someone go from like the Ryzen 7000 series to this particular line of CPU. So it'll be very interesting to see how all of this shapes up. 
but my guess at the moment is probably low to mid teens in terms of overall performance information. Um, this, of course, is based upon clock frequency and so on. I want to stress this is a guess. I'm basing this purely off of AMD generation on generation gains historically. It could be a little more. It could be a lot. It could be a little less. I don't think we're going to see like a 3% improvement in performance. And simultaneously, I don't think it's going to be quite as big of a deal as uh, Zen 5. But we'll have to wait and see because there are a couple of other elements which really add a lot of complexity here. I'm told that the IO die of Zen 4 is returning with the Ryzen 8000 series of chips. In other words, Zen 5 for desktop. But Zen 6 takes a very different approach. Um, there seems to be some really big changes with the interconnects of the chip and the way that Infinity Cache is handled. Now, I'm told basically that this means that the chip, in theory, should have more bandwidth, and Ulrak recently hinted this on Twitter, and from what I understand, he is correct, but unfortunately, my sources are playing very coy on how this actually works, and of course, that's because the more information they reveal, it becomes just a lot easier to track down who is saying what, because typically with AMD and all of these companies, you only have some, you know, not everyone knows everything. In other words, you have one group of engineers that may know one specific thing about a project and another on another thing. So it becomes a lot harder to kind of, you know, keep things quiet if, you know, you know everything about something. I don't know if that makes any sense, but long story short, I've also heard a much lower confidence rumor that we could see something like CCD on IOD. Basically, the whole thing being kind of stacked with memory controllers and IO die forming kind of the base with the CCD sitting on, on top. I don't necessarily know if this is the case. I'm a little skeptical on this, but uh, either way, it seems that basically, from what I understand anyway, the mobile implementation is essentially going to be reused for desktop. And this also brings with it some obvious questions. What about hybrid cores? Or to put it another way, will we see Zen 6 and 6C, or Big Little if you prefer, make its way to the desktop? Now, I've had some sources state that the answer is yes, but honestly, I cannot be totally certain. And I've also been given some different CCD core counts as well. 8, 12, and 16, which of course leads to a lot of confusion and a lot of possibilities. A few of these are that the higher end core count, for example, 16 is server, and lower end, for example, 8 is the desktop. It's possible that this count also includes big and little cores, or it's possible that there is simply some misinformation here, it's not true, or it was considered at one point but then scrapped. And this is not unheard of. Like, for example, you might recall that Jim over at Adorn TV reported that L2 cache was being tested for Zen 5 at 1, 2, as well as 3 megabytes, and while it was technically tested, it never ended up actually making its way into a product release. So they basically just, you know, stuck with whatever uh, specs, and this happens a lot. They basically test different things, and it's not necessarily a product that sometimes is ever going to be released. So it's very difficult sometimes to know whether something is just being tested internally with no actual cause of, or sorry, no actual plan to release it. But multiple people now have told me that they have seen a 16 uh, core CCD and as well as an eight. And I've heard some mixed information concerning the 12. Now, my guess is that AMD will probably push big dot little or hybrid, whatever you want to call it to the desktop, because it would help create unification across the desktop and mobile market. And again, I've had multiple people tell me now that this is what they want to do. And it's approach as well that Intel have taken, of course, with their own CPUs. I am simplifying things significantly here for the purposes of time. And AMD's approach to small cores, of course, has been very, diff uh, very different to Intel's. They are basically the same ISA, basic architecture, albeit changes in cache, reduced clocks, power consumption, that type of thing. We've seen some interviews with AMD in the past which have given us some mixed information. For example, we saw Mark Papermaster say that you'll see high performance cores mixed with power efficient cores with mixed acceleration. And then he goes on to say that whether or not it's going to come to the uh, client PCs, he responded absolutely. But then we also heard some mixed information with another interview where they said, and I quote, does that make its way to the desktop where you're looking at 
power unrestrained, I think it's harder to make that argument. We're constantly looking at different core types and how they might fit into our architectures. And I think more laptops are more practical application from when you see that adopted. Um, outside of the quote, it's very obvious, of course, that AMD have been pushing various accelerator technologies, particularly in the mobile space. And it's going to be very interesting to see how AMD ends up um, kind of marketing its processor cores and more so accurately just how Intel responds as well. Obviously, we've seen so many conflicting reports concerning Intel's plans going forward. And Arrow Lake, for example, is looking very interesting. I'll talk more about Arrow Lake in another video because I, this one's already getting a little longer than what I'd perhaps hoped for. But um, yeah, Arrow Lake will be the start of something quite different. I've heard that Arrow Lake, and I've reported this in another video, uh, is possibly going to have quite low clock frequencies. We'll have to wait and see whether that's uh, what happens for the, you know, the end release of the CPU, the, you know, the retail release, final silicon. But um, I will be extremely interested to see what happens in the market for x86. You know, one of the, there's a really big argument when it comes to core counts on the desktop, because, for example, we could see 16 cores for the, you know, uh, high-end performance cores and 16, you know, uh, energy efficient cores for the desktop. That's just an example. I'm not saying that this is going to happen. But um, it will be very interesting to see how software actually evolves. Um, for example, the PlayStation 6 or, you know, the next Xbox or whatever, just assume that they do stick to AMD. I don't think we're going to see like 32 cores on those machines. Let's just be honest. So in terms of gaming, um, obviously it's a little different because a lot of applications simply, when it comes to games, of course, they simply don't scale across a crap ton of CPU cores. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see exactly how software evolves as well. I will also be very interested to see what happens in terms of the pricing for the Zen 5 processors as well. I think that uh, the PC market at the moment has kind of settled in somewhat. Obviously, you've got the uh, Raptor Lake refresh, which is coming out, um, I think it's like October time. But, uh, I mean, if we're talking about the highest end processor, for example, the 14900K, it's like, eh. So, yeah, I'll be very interested to hear what also you guys think regarding the Vcash situation. I did do a poll on Twitter a while ago um, when I was uh, at my <laughs> illest, I think, with the flu, uh, which I'm pretty much over at the moment, but I'm still kind of just like sweating and just not feeling 100%, hence the fact that I'm not on camera today because the temperatures in the UK are absolutely ridiculous. So I'm literally just dripping with sweat and just kind of feel a little bit out of it. But I think I should be all right soon. Honestly, I have no idea what the hell I caught, guys. Like, it it was brutal. <laughs> I mean, I was literally bedridden for like a week. It was not good. And a few other people I know now who I haven't even seen have just gotten this thing. So it seems to just be like the bubonic plague that's floating around um, the entire UK at the moment, so hopefully all of you guys are okay, but I'm just very curious, what, what is your general strategy? Like, you know Zen 5, um, is gonna, of course, launch, and then we're gonna see the V-cache processors afterwards with a very similar time frame to what we've seen with, you know, in the past, so I'm curious, do you guys wait? Do you get the vanilla processors, and then, you know, then buy the V-Cash, or do you just, like, wait and then buy the V-Cash, or just buy the vanilla and then just kind of stick with that? Is it going to be price-dependent? Very curious to hear what you guys think about that one. With that said, um, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.